this video we'll be going over how to use how to install and use putty in windows so putty is a program that really allows you to do many different things but the primary use that we will take from it is connecting via ssh to a the ip address or in this case the display um so as i've mentioned in previous videos about display setup you <clears throat> you should connect the display to your host computer um via ethernet when we're working with the display working with programming the display either through links in our virtual machine in qt or codasys so when we're connected via ethernet we want to be able to access the display uh, both for programming and to be able to get to the files and you know pull files off the display or put them on or move and, and do things with files so uh, putty allows us to do that and it's especially useful if you're not using links if all you plan to use is codasys then I would recommend watching both this video on PuTTY and the video on FileZilla because in that case you don't need to download our virtual development environment and you don't need to use the Linux terminal within that. You can just get by using PuTTY and FileZilla to really do almost everything within and codices of course. Um, okay, so we'll open up the internet here and just uh, go type in putty and you can see the first link we get is download putty a free SSH and telnet client so uh, the first one here is download putty and you get a link and you can download it here um, so this big list comes up so we just want you know for it says the first one for Windows on Intel x86 so that's what I'm using, but they also have uh, different versions. Uh, let's see. I believe they have a version for Linux, maybe. Or well, maybe not. It might just be a Windows tool. But uh, regardless, Windows is, is really what we're after in this video. So, um,. So you can click here. I already have it installed or really downloaded. It's just an exe file. So there's no need to do any installation on your computer. You'll just be using it in the exe. Uh, so you can download here. It'll should pop up a message saying, you know, do I want to download? So you can just save as and put it, you know, putty exe, put it wherever you want. For me, I put it on my desktop, so once it's downloaded, this will be what it looks like, and we can go ahead and open it. So this video assumes that you've already watched the video about setting up your display IP address, either using a DHCP server like a wireless router, or using your host computer, or setting it to a static IP address. So this assumes that your display is connected to your host computer, most likely Windows, in, at least in my case. So this is PuTTY also provides a good way to check if your connection is good. So if, you, if you're just using the virtual machine and you try to connect and you're not able to connect, the, the problem may be that you your display is not connected correctly to your host computer in this case windows or it could be that windows your windows machine or your host computer is not corrected connect <laughs> uh correctly connected to the virtual machine so putty allows you to sort of debug that a bit or figure out where you're having a connection problem is it from your host computer to the display or from your host computer to the virtual machine. So if we're able to connect to the display via PuTTY, 
but you're not able to connect in the virtual machine, then your problem is somewhere with the connection between your Windows host and the virtual machine. But if you're not able to connect through PuTTY at all, then there's a problem with your host computer finding the IP address of the display, or maybe the IP address or the display doesn't have an IP address. So in my case, uh, I'm using a VA for this test, and I know my IP address is 192.168.0.26. So um, I'm going to type that in here, make sure SSH is selected and it will default to port 22. So we're just going to keep that. Um, you can save your settings if you want. So I use multiple displays and each one has different addresses. But if I wanted to save this, I could say uh, VA display, for instance, and save it. And now when I click the VA display, it would bring up these settings up above here. Um, okay, so once I have these typed in, I can just hit open. And if it's your first time connecting to a display, it will pop up with a security message. It'll say like RSA key not identified or not found. Would you like to add? And it'll say yes, no, or exit maybe. Uh, I believe it gives you three options. You want to click yes. Now the RSA key is a security measure that essentially identifies the SSH host you're connecting to. And so once you click yes, that ID will essentially be saved in your RSA key file and <clears throat> you won't need to click that every time you connect. So in the future it should be saved and recognize it. So uh, once you click yes though you should get to this login as and we're going to use root as our login name. And then the password for root is susroot, S-U-S-E-R-O-O-T. And this pound sign here tells us, at least on the ARM-based displays, that we are in the display. Um, we can do a CD space uh, slash opt, and then LS, and see the files in our user or opt directory on the display. So if this is your first time connecting to the display, you most likely will not have nearly as many files, but you will have some of them, such as bin, etc, lib, uh, maybe I believe packages, sbin. So some of these will be there, but others you'll get as you install more items onto the display. Um, okay, so that covers how to use PuTTY, what it does. There's other videos about basics in the Linux bash terminal. So how do we actually get around the file system in, in Linux and, or in the bash terminal? Um, so I'll leave that for another video. Please go watch that video if you're unfamiliar with these, this and um, please watch the FileZilla video if you want to know how to copy and paste files. I think, and okay, I think that does it for this video. Uh, other videos will explain getting around the file system please go watch the videos about the, the basic display file system and also the Linux bash commands. That'll help you get familiar with the display and the file systems in there. And I think that does it. Thanks for watching.